Woo. Aloha guys, Justin here with another episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii. So, Finally get to collaborate with this guy, um, yes, uh, Ethan. You check out his channel at Ethan Lau. We got Micah and Tyson over here as well. We're gonna jump in the water, try to catch some fish, and hopefully get some content and make a spearfishing episode for you guys. So um, yeah, let's jump in the water. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, welcome back to another spearfishing episode. I'm really excited to share this whole episode with you guys because yeah it's it's really fun it's really <laughs> like just wait until the end there's a lot of it's, it's just gonna be classic um some things that i want to go over i just want to create like a name for our community fish and dive family something like that if you guys have any ideas please comment them below maybe not fish and dive family that sounds pretty corny but yeah and the reason why i say that is because this episode is our first dive where i go diving with um some subscribers ethan lau has his own YouTube channel, but he's been a huge uh, supporter of Fish and Dive Hawaii. He's been a subscriber since I think we were like under 30 subscribers when he he first hopped on, and he's just always been a big part of the community. And his friends also are subscribed to the channel and love all the videos here that um, we do at Fish and Dive Hawaii. So yeah, it's just really cool being able to hang out with you guys, pretty much like you guys in the community. Um, I took them diving to some familiar grounds. This right here is like a nice little taco I found. Less than one pound, so it wasn't a keeper. And yeah, I pretty much grew up diving these grounds. So it's kind of cool showing them kind of like, I guess, a part of who I am as a diver. Being able to take them to spots on the North Shore where I grew up. And when I was a beginner, this is kind of where I learned how to dive. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. So we're right on top of the little house right here. It's right here. If you want to take a drop and look underneath. So one thing you may have noticed is I'm not including any background music. I kind of, there's a lot of, of dialogue between me and Ethan as we're diving. And I kind of just want to have you guys experience just natural, like how it sounds like when we're diving, how it sounds, what we're, what we're talking to each other about as we're out on the water. And I just want to keep it like kind of more, uh, more personal type of video between you guys and and like what I'm seeing and doing in the water. So the spot I took them to has this ledge that I consider kind of like a little mini alua house. It's not a traditional one. It's just kind of like this little lip of reef. And I've run into some big omilus that always hang out on the back cave area. Um, but I never did got a chance to shoot one, but it's kind of cool trying to see if we could land in Alua um, somehow some way, but unfortunately nobody was home today What was that? Huh? What was that? I don't know, just looking. <laughs> There's some big mampachis in here, but they're kind of deep inside. What's that? Mampachis? Yeah. Inside this hole, but they're kind of deep inside, so okay. we'll see how fast, how, how easy they are to get. So I don't know if you guys could hear what me and Ethan were talking about, but um, there's some big mampachis in the back of this cave, so I went ahead, grabbed my gun, switch it out to a three prong pole spear and i'm going to try to catch some impachis it was one of my favorite fish to fry um, and there's some big ones in this cave you'll see this one right here this was a huge mimpachi that i shot and it ripped off and unfortunately went way in the back of the cave and yeah it's pretty it's pretty sad after this So the depth that we're diving, it's not too deep, maybe 35, 40, 40 something feet, I don't know. Um, but going into the cave and stuff is a little sketchier, especially, you know, I don't push to my limits a lot anymore. So I try to stay where I'm comfortable 
And yeah, so I went on the corner of the cave, shot this nice Mimpachi right here. Wasn't quite as big as the first one, but this was a solid size. Has a nice little yellow backs. And yeah, that's this is one like cool three prong tip. I don't know if I, I've talked about this on the channel yet, but anytime you guys catch a fish on the three prong, make sure you bring it in slowly. If you try to jerk it, the fish might come off. Bring it in slowly, grab the other side of the spear so you kind of hold the fish on. And yeah, um, I was pretty confident that this fish wasn't going anywhere anymore. So I'm gonna brain it, put it on my kui. Third drop with the three prong, trying to see if I can line at least one more Mimpachi. Kind of, kind of try to finish like a nice meal, not just having one fish, but two nice mimpachis that are good size, perfect for like a nice little dinner. Um, but yeah, couldn't find any. They probably all went to the back of the cave. You can see all that sand and the silt on the left side. Um, that's all kind of worked up from when I was um, diving on that spot when I missed the first mimpachi. So here's the fourth drop with the, with the three prong. Uh, went on the far left side, trying to see if the Mimpachi kind of moved in that direction. And I think they're just all hiding in the back, uh, which is a smart move because they probably seen that if they come a little bit closer that I'm gonna lodge a spear at them. And yeah, that wouldn't be very good for them. So yeah, um, I kind of was over this spot at this point. Just kind of deeper drops. Um, the Mimpachi aren't there, so we're gonna move on to different grounds. So the next move was to sweep into some shallower grounds and then we'll move diagonally um, out towards deeper grounds and come back in and then we'll finish the dive. But I found this this thing and I thought it was um, something very inappropriate but I figured out <laughs> what it was and it's one of those like snorkel things for the full face mask and I actually just did a review on, on those things just a couple episodes ago so you guys should go check that video out. <laughs> So as we were swimming around the reef structures, I ran into this pile of fish, um, some palanis, some kala, some uhus, and the fish here are really smart. The big uhus are super smart, but the younger ones are usually more tame, and I've seen some younger ones are coming in a little close, so I thought we had a good chance of landing one, and um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys some of my strategies that I go about whenever I'm hunting piles of fish like this. Um, just a couple different things so the first one is going to be to take a drop make sure you're hiding in a nice area so the fish are more curious to kind of figure out where you are if you take a drop and you're just in the middle of the reef it's kind of hard for the fish to want to swim in because they know exactly where you are but if you hide in a little spot like this you'll see uh, this little crack in the reef i always try to look for some structure that i can get behind where the fish um, can't see my entire body or can't see me entirely it kind of raises their curiosity. They'll swim in a little bit closer, as you guys see that uhu right there. But um, these fish were actually pretty smart too, so they kind of kept their distance. I'm going to try a couple more drops and see if we can land one. You see them? Yeah, see they're still there. It's kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in this spot and dust a little bit. So, if you guys seen the way I came out of that um, little shelf area, I try to swim away from where the fish are. That way, if you kind of if you swim straight up or swim even towards them and up, it might spook them and it, the whole pile might dig out. So, because I swam diagonally up away from the fish, they kind of hung out in the same area. They moved a little bit. Um, further away, but in, not enough for, for me to think that they wouldn't come in. So I took a drop dusting right now. You guys can see scratching reef, trying to do anything I can to try to bring in this fish um, close enough where I can get a shot.
So the first thing is make sure you find a good hiding spot. Second thing is do what you can to try to call in the fish, whether it's scratching reef, um, dusting the sand. Um, some people use grunting as a method. To me, I've never really learned a good way to grunt where the fish come in, but some people swear by it. So if you can grunt and call in fish, then more power to you. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. If the fish come in and you can take a shot, it's really good. Usually, I only take about anywhere from three to like six or seven drops on a fish. Anything more than that, I'm just spending way too much time trying to hunt one fish and I'll move on to um, different grounds or a different pile. Nice little cave over here. I swear I seen some in Pachi. I, I pulled out the three prong. I'm gonna do a little upside down action, which is a cool three prong method. If you guys want to try it out, just go upside down on the ledge. Helps you kind of have more arm room to make a shot. But it was just a little rock cod. Um, but yeah, cool, cool little spot. Big circle. It looks like a little crater. Uh, potential to be like a little mini Omilu house. One thing about diving here even as I review the footage, it's just, it's really nostalgic because I've dove here dozens of times. I dove here as a beginner. I remember everything that I struggled with, so it kind of brings back those memories. So it's kind of cool sharing it with you guys. Um, right here is a, a taco hole, or so I thought it was because of the empty crab shell next to it. But yeah, no taco today. But usually if you see like some shells or something and there's a hole next to it, it doesn't hurt to see if there's any taco inside. And right here is a nice little Munu goldfish. Um, I I totally forgot to get the shot, but I think I think I turned my GoPro off to save battery. Um, who knows? So right now we're kind of swimming into a little bit shallow areas. Usually when I hit shallow grounds, especially when I'm diving in like a few guys, I always unload my bands just in case. I just don't want my gun going off at all, um, hitting a rock or something. So I always try to unload my bands. Um, yeah, just to be safe. Ethan! 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 Taco. Huh? Taco. Yeah? Grab one, I'll film you. Well, what is it? So from the surface, I see this little taco. Um, I tell Ethan to go down. I want to record him taking the taco out of the hole. But this thing is a little ninja. Like you'll see it come out and it'll torpedo out the back. Never seen a taco move this fast. <laughs> and it just is gone. Um, I even tried to grab it and I didn't have much luck either just to kind of record it. I think it was super small. So I think that's why it's so fast too. But um, yeah, overall, really fun dive. Um, Ethan finds these two big 7-Eleven crabs. I think they're fighting or something as we're swimming in. If you guys want to go watch that Catch and Cook, it's on his channel. Go check it out. Yeah, a lot of fun. What a nice 7 Eleven crab. Flounder, Pachi. There's a winner right there. Wow, these are dozer crabs, dude. Yeah, good size, yeah. But. <laughs> Oh. Bro, let's see the damage. Let's see the damage. What do you do? It doesn't look. It's just inside. Oh, no, it's the other side. <laughs> oh, yeah. that leaves a mark. A lot stronger than I thought. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm back at my house, and of course, I've got the fish inside of the pelican cooler. Big cooler. Not a whole lot of fish inside, and. Don't mind this, my wife just went on a crossbow run today. So um, yeah, the fish is in here. I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna clean them um, on the side over there on my stainless steel table. And then I'll show you guys how we do all that stuff and I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do with the fish after that. So one thing I haven't really done is go over some of the features on top of this cooler. So this is a 50 quart 
obviously a pretty big cooler it can fit a lot of stuff inside of here and it's also got a measuring tool i guess you can say see how long you can um how long your fish is when you catch it so it's got it in inches and centimeters and i've got a pretty big manpachi in here not my biggest one i think i've caught but definitely in the in the top five so let's see how well it measures up on top of this thing okay so the manpachi let's do it from head to tail so right there right at zero so this bugger is let's see hold on son. so this bugger is 10 and a half inches it looks like so you got 10 right there right in between 10 and 11 pretty big one man pretty big mimpachi about a shaka shaka and a half shaka and a half length Minpachi right there. This one's got the yellow spines on the back And look at that shot. I got the shot right here behind the head. So that thing isn't going anywhere Okay, this Munu is not the biggest Munu I've caught by far But still decent size for a pretty uneventful dive so This one is zero That one is about nine and a half inches for this Munu right here. So nine and a half inch Nine and a half inch drill, ten and a half inch um, impachi, and let's go ahead and clean this stuff up. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually, I'm actually gonna clean it on top of the cooler. Don't tell my wife because I am putting this stuff back in the back of my car, but I will wash it good. So, <laughs> all right. So one thing with the impachi is that um, they have a lot of spines on top of it. So when you're cleaning, you have to be very careful. Uh, that you don't poke yourself because it can be very painful um, so just be careful there's spines on the back there's spines on the side um, and there's also spines like in the tail area just just be careful when you're cleaning these ones the munu doesn't have um, pretty much any spines but just like any other fish um, the bones can get pretty pretty painful if you poke yourself so you just got to be cautious of that so let's just scale these super easy um, scales to do other than uhus so you can even go with your finger and take some of these things off right here so um, I'm gonna use a spoon because it's just that much faster but if you want to you can just get away with using your hand when it comes to goatfish so you're just gonna run your spoon along right here all over the whole fish And the one thing with cleaning fish is sometimes I get lazy. I mean, if you guys have been watching my, my shows for a while, you guys notice that I don't always clean the fish within the first day, which I do recommend, but sometimes stuff comes up. That's why having this like Pelican cooler is perfect because I put literally two scoops of ice in it, two, three scoops of ice in it on Monday, and the water is still freezing cold. So I know the fish is good, and it's only been in there since Tuesday. So now that I'm cleaning it, um, can go ahead and cook it up right away and it'll still be, be within that three four day range where you'd want to cook your fresh fish So right here, this is the fish all cleaned. I don't know if you guys can tell there's still gonna be some scales on top of it um, But that's just the ones that are already peeled because I need to wash it off still but yeah very easy fish to clean Now let's do the mempachi over here so these fish are going to be a little more difficult to clean than the munu that we just did but um, once you get something going it'll all come off pretty easy but again you have to be careful from the spines because they will hurt and this is the one thing I hate about cleaning mempachis is that I usually always get poked when I am cleaning this fish but it's such a such an awesome fish to eat uh, I wouldn't say the meat is sweet but it's definitely one of the better fried fish that you can make from fish that you catch here in Hawaiian waters. So you wanna make sure you get all the scales, the ones even under their gill plate right over here, under their belly, all in the top over here by the spines. And the one thing with these fish is they have a lot of meat. Like look, how, look at the width and the girth of this fish right here. And this fish, like I said, is a really big one for a mempachi, especially for like Oahu where a lot of the diving spots are pretty much overfished. Um, this, this, these fish were hanging out inside of that little alua hole that you guys seen in the video. But the one you guys seen before rip off was slightly bigger than this one. So this is a good idea of how big the fish were inside of that cave. So you figure about a 40 foot deep cave 
that's these fish were way in there they don't see a lot of humans going inside of there so they're really tame when the fish get left alone they get really big like this one so I was stoked that I was able to land one. So both these fish are all scaled up. Now let's go ahead and clean out the insides of it. I have here this knife that I just took out of the house. I don't know where my pen fillet set is. This is the one that's you guys see in all my other videos. Um, but I'm going to start from the back of the fish. I'm just going to work my way all the way to the front. And the one thing about Mempachi is it's so clean on the inside. It's so easy to clean out all that stuff. So. Just take your hand, stick it in there. So here, I got all the stuff on the inside out. Now the fish is pretty much all cleaned out and it's good to go. Just gotta rinse it out and we're good. So right here, the moon was also a very clean fish. Easy to take everything out and now we're good to go. Now we got two um, cleaned out fish. All we gotta do is rinse it off and it's ready for the fryer. So once you're done with it, you can open up this valve right here and it lets out all the water. What are you holding? <laughs> So with this mempachi, I actually am going to give this to my grandma then. Because my, gran oh, no. my grandpa them love mempachi. What is that? Mempachi. I thought it was a real one dog. <laughs> thought this was a dog? Yeah, the back oh. of the sea. Oh. Where you had in the ice? Yeah. You no. didn't clean them? You cleaned them? I just cleaned it. I'll fight for Papa tonight. Okay. You don't need this? It's clean. Are you recording me? Yeah. Why? Wait, this guy's nuts. No, he's, a, he's reading me a fish and he's hiding it. And I thought the damn camera was a dog. Because <laughs> there's a fuzzy thing on it. Let's see, is Bitsy out? <laughs> That's Bitsy right there. <laughs> no, I didn't know. He showed me a fuzzy camera. Check at his camera. I, I don't want to see it. What is that? <laughs> Not the fish, it's the camera. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> she make me look big. When I said she takes pictures, my gosh, guys, how funny is that? Oh, my fish is gone. So guys, my grandpa and them have a pretty big property here in Haleiwa and on the property there's like a bunch of wild cats and chickens and stuff. So I literally walked to the front of the house to give my grandma them and Pachi and um, yeah, I came back and the moon is gone off of here. So literally within five minutes a cat came and stole the perfectly clean, perfectly ready to cook fish for me. So I guess that's just how it goes. Wow, man, I'm low key. I'm low-key pretty upset right now because it literally, I just cleaned that fish and it was ready to fry up and I was going to finish this episode on a catch and cook action. Oh my gosh, but I guess that's going to have to be the end of the episode. Um, actually, I'm going to go tell my wife that a cat stole my fish just now. Guess what happened? What? A cat took the fish. Yep. How'd you know? It's not even funny. Where is it? It's gone. I walked back there and it's gone. What's gone? A cat stole my fish. <laughs> what kind of fish? Look, I had another fish that I caught. I tell you something, you can't have nothing. Look at them at the party. The cats were not there when they ate the food. See? I walked what back kind of fish? It was like a, a goat fish. They caught a moon. <sighs> it wasn't as big as a mimpachi, but I mean, I just finished cleaning you it. You cannot leave nothing around the patio. I swear Gosh. that thing looks spooky. <laughs> what? The What's cabin? that supposed to be? That sh ball on the thing? top, right here. Yeah. It's a that fuzzy thing. It's a microphone. So it picks up all your f words. Oh yeah. Oh my. God. <laughs> Jerry, don't swear now. It's gonna catch up on you. <laughs> In the area eating it, yeah. Yeah. So my wife really wants to look for this cat. Go get the gun. So guys, I was going to end this episode on a catch and cook, but let's just stick to the original outro that we were going to do. Alright guys, just finished our dive today. But so crab, yes, so, uh, pachis, flounder, and amunu. So these, actually, these guys are actually going to go to Waimea with me. We're going to go try to catch some halalu if the pile's still in, and some awama, and then throw them out for live bait. So hopefully we catch. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. We found a mean spot with a fat school color A couple bar beers and some lobbies for the grill I wanna go back but I promise
job and have a will Because my brother Chav, he will show me this place And if you post a pic, he going insta my face Chav is pretty nuts, bro, I don't like scrap And he's doing crossfit, so he's all tough So I no like expose, no like expose I no like tell you cause Bombay don't go It's the best spot that I ever did find But if I tell you gon' get plenty kind guys I was on the north Riding hoss with my uncle He showed me a map on an old belt buckle We had to cut trail and we had to cross streams But when we got there the freaking valley was me Up on the ridge with the wind in my face I chop through the trenches but I keep the pace The spot is pretty mean and I wanna go back But if I did that uncle probably gon' snap Cause he no like expose, no like expose I no like tell you cause Bombay gon' go it's the best spot that I ever did find But if I tell you gon' get plenty kind guys I was on the west side Oh there brother I know you're not talking about the west side, kid You better pump your brakes Before you do that kind of stuff And another thing Don't you be coming over here exposing It's all about respect, brother Respect, respect behind all You know what I mean? Okay, thank you